We've got the Land Rover Defender and look where we are. We're doing a little bit of off-roading. And we look very field and stream today. We dressed appropriately. So this is a brand new off-road capable truck. We'll do that first and then we'll take it on road. So you just hit a button and then you have all these options. And we're gonna hit grass, gravel, snow program. Yep. And then we're gonna we're raise, raise it. Raise it up. Yeah. I and, mean, you have to admit, that's pretty easy. Just well, we're, there are other features buttons. about it that are a little bit confusing. Okay, here about. we go. So it raises up this vehicle to go through this very rutted, snowy area. Yeah. All right, Andrea. Wow. What do you have to say about the Defender? I just think it's fantastic for anybody who was wondering about its off-road capabilities. It's awesome. So the previous Defender was a body on frame SUV and this new Defender has a unibody design. Okay, so this new unibody design, some are thinking, well, why did Land Rover change it? So Land Rover said, not only are we gonna make a unibody design, but we're gonna nail it. We're gonna make the best off-roader that we have ever made. All right, just keep, keep, yeah, there you go. Oh, almost got stuck there, Dre, but not a problem. So um, we're going to explain a little bit about what a unibody and a body on frame is. But yeah. first of all, what's under the hood? So we've got three engines and this, it comes with a two liter four cylinder turbocharged engine with 296 horsepower and 296 pound feet of torque. The one that we're driving, which I recommend, is the three liter inline six turbocharged engine. Okay, it, okay just because we're going to a deep hole here, so slow. you can hear the... Okay, just go over slowly. Yeah. And oh, wow. Yeah, okay. okay. To the left, to the left, to the left. Keep the throttle on. Okay, don't. Yep, yeah, there you go. There you go. Yeah. You almost went in the ditch, Drea. <laughs> keep the. Okay, now we're going up a hill. Yeah. Now you have to just keep Regular, momentum. You want speed. momentum. You don't want to keep the wheels spinning or anything. You just want momentum. Yeah. Okay, so you were saying the three liter is so the one the you recommend. I recommend the three liter inline keep the, six. Keep the power it's on. a terrific engine. It has 395 horsepower and 406 pound-feet of torque. I think Zach's getting a little bit no, nervous. Just I'm to... just having a lot of fun here. All right, so when we get to the top here... Um, oh, can... one more engine to talk about, the V8, which is now in the 2022 model. You know what's missing, though, Andrea? Okay, stop here. Oh, that was exhausting. <laughs> Oh, come on. It no, was it's, totally fun. It, it's totally fun. It's a little nerve wracking. But anyway, I just wanted to say what's missing is the diesel. They have that beautiful three liter turbocharged diesel engine in the Range Rover. It's yeah. got 450 pound feet of torque, something like that. That's a monster. That's the one I would love in this. Well, there's rumors that maybe we'll get it in this, but uh, just rumors for now. And it's sold in, in Europe, but not sold here. Okay, we stopped here for a second. We're going to get into our key standard features, and, and plus, I want to drive. Yeah, I think Zach was having a bit of a heart attack, but <laughs> I wasn't. The Defender 110 base model comes with LED headlights and taillights, keyless entry, durable rubber cabin, leather heated steering wheel, 10-way semi-powered heated front seats, a 10-inch touchscreen, 12.3-inch digital instrument cluster, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, wireless charging and 19 inch wheels so we have it in off-road and snow what else do we have to put it in we got to put it in s for subscribe and if you can hit the notification bell it really helps the channel you'll be notified when the videos drop and then you can watch them there have been some complaints from people saying if you hit the subscribe and notification bell that elves will come and clean your car every day mm. been some complaints people saying their car is still dirty in the morning i have complaints yeah but you know what you gotta you gotta have faith it's like santa you gotta believe all right and if you want to follow andrea on instagram it's motormouth underscore andrea and for me it's motormouth underscore auto and the links are below this video is brought to you by Car Cost Canada. Get the dealer's cost, list of rebates, plus discounted interest rates. Use the promo code MOTORMOUTH to become an expert member and get extra searches. The link is in the description below. Uh, before we start, Andrew, I feel much more relaxed over here. Wow, he was really stressed. <laughs> I wasn't worried at all. Okay, so let's talk a bit about the differences between a body on frame SUV and a UNA body design. Well, I brought props, Strap. Mm. Look at this. Look this, at Zach. This is toy from my childhood, and Aww. this one not so much. No. All right. So this is a good way to basically show it. So this is a truck, obviously, right? And what you can see is 
the, the wheels and the axles and everything are mounted onto a frame. Okay, so that is a frame and then the body is bolted on top. Yeah. So this could be a pickup truck with a pickup truck bed. Yes. It could be an SUV with an SUV back on it. Yeah. So that would be a vehicle like, like an Escalade sure. or a Forerunner or a Wrangler, something like that. So there's the frame, that's the body, that's body on frame. Yeah. Now we have a Porsche Cayenne. Now Porsche Cayenne, the frame and the body and everything is integrated together. Everything is built. So this is what you would use for a standard car. Sure. So this is what's called a unibody. Uni meaning one body and this is two body on frame. So that's the difference. So what would be the reason that Land Rover would move to this instead of just producing the same as the Wrangler or the Toyota 4Runner, right? Both of those have excellent resale value. Number one reason is fuel economy. Mm -hmm. You're lugging around this big metal frame. That is a lot of weight, yeah. right? And that's the number one reason. All right, so uh, Wiggle the Toys, let's get into it. So this is, this is um, lighter yep. and stronger. And Land Rover said, we can do what we used to do with a body on frame, but we can actually do it better with yeah. a unibody design. Yeah. And it sure feels good to me. Yeah, it's, it's quite amazing. And do you know what's really something about this is that you can come off-roading, enjoy all of this, but then you can get on city roads mm -hmm. and it's refined and smooth. It has tons of power. Yeah. It's a terrific engine. First of all, this vehicle has air suspension, yes. so it can go up and down. And that's standard if you get the 110, the one that we're driving here. Yeah. And then in addition, you have independent suspension. Now, typically with the old uh, Defender, you had solid axles. Now, it used to be complained that you didn't have enough articulation. Yeah. Thank you. We got somebody here walking their dog. Um, enough articulation. And that is where the wheels are allowed to move up and down like mm -hmm. this. Uh, Land Rover says you now have more wheel articulation and when you add in the ground clearance, which is better than the old Defender, um, it makes it a real beast. Mm -hmm. And I just want to add that Motor Trend actually named the 2021 model SUV of the year. Yeah. And Motor Trend said that Land Rover has done an excellent job with this and that there's many automakers that can produce an SUV that says, sure, it can go off-roading, but are they really capable? Well, like, what, look at that. That yeah. was a deep... The deep rut, the same yeah. one you almost went off. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what we're talking about are these terrain management settings, yeah. right? And what's interesting is a lot of them were swiped from Land Rover. So who bought Land Rover? BMW. Yeah. Oh, all of a sudden the terrain management settings show up in BMW. Easy, Zach. Easy, <laughs> Zach. I feel like we're sliding a bit. And then Ford bought Land Rover and then sure enough, they took all of those terrain management settings and you get them like in a Ford Explorer. Yeah. So yeah, they have the ability now to use the electronics, but you have to be able to marry the electronics to the hardware. Like the, the amount that this thing can raise off the ground for doing stuff like this, like yeah. deep ruts, it's nothing short of amazing. Yeah. Incredible. So typically you would buy a body on frame SUV for extra towing capacity, mm -hmm. but this unibody is amazing. What's it rated at? Yeah, so this inline six engine can tow up to 8,200 pounds and then the two liter four cylinder turbocharged 7,700 pounds. That's amazing. Yeah. That's incredible. So Zach, are you feeling a bit better now that you're driving? We're almost at the main road. <laughs> Why don't we take a break, have a coffee and answer a few questions. Time now for questions, coffee, and cars. Your questions from Instagram. How does it differ from the LR4 and will this cannibalize the full discovery sales? I think they mean full size discovery. Yeah, full size discovery. Well, the LR4 is the old uh, discovery basically and it was a body on frame. We've talked a lot about yes. that already. Much heavier, terrible on gas, boxy, and then they went to the new one. I think that this will affect discovery sales to some extent. Yes, I agree with you. I think it will, but this isn't a big seven seater. So if you need a seven seater, all three rows up at all time, I don't think this is the best one for you. You're going to go with the full size discovery. Yeah, this thing's tiny in the third row. Zach, what do you say when you're cramped in the third row? It's you're back in prison back there <laughs> or the mother-in-law seat. You decide. Oh, let's not. Not go my mother-in-law, your mother-in-law. <laughs> 
How is Land Rover looking to address the reliability and quality issues reported in multiple new defenders? There are multiple videos on YouTube showcasing the day-to-day -day issues of current owners. So let's just go through this. If you look at Land Rover Jaguar initial quality studies and dependability, so after three years from JD Power, yep. they're right now near the bottom. Not good. But what's happened with dependability and quality scores recently? Well, they've all gone up. In mm. fact, auto manufacturers are making better products, more dependable and more reliable products. So this is good news. So everybody's getting better, but this is still at the, near the bottom of the pile. Yeah. So just be warned. Why do people buy these cars when their reliability is uniformly terrible? Well, you know, Andrea, there's a fine line between pain and pleasure. Yeah, there and so, really is. <laughs> and um, this is exactly what we're dealing with here. Yeah. There's a lot of pleasure you get from this. It looks cool as hell. Uh, it can do a lot of great stuff. Drives well. It drives really well. Um, it's got lots of power. Yeah. That's all of that. Now, um, the pain part of it is, my God, I got to take it into the dealer again for some <laughs> service. So you have to decide how much pain and pleasure you want in your life. And some sometimes it meets right in the middle and that might be for you the defender mm -hmm. another vehicle that i get a lot about this is the gti you know i love the gti yes, well yeah. there's a pain pleasure matrix there and for me i would put up that with the discomfort to own a gti okay so see the way i work gti into yeah, a defender video yeah i see that so i would say lisa it will give you a three-year <laughs> test lisa, drive that's the best How, advice you've heard all day lisa uh, However, when you lease it, you still have to take it into the shop if yeah. there's a problem. So it's really about how valuable is your time versus how much do you love this vehicle. And from what I see, it's selling. Like crazy. Yeah. How does the Defender compare to the flagship Range Rover? Does it drive the same, have the same level of luxury? Not at all. I mean, the drive is similar, yeah. is similar but the luxury inside, no. no. But I don't think that's the look that Land Rover was going for with this Defender. This is pure marketing genius. We're going to make a rugged, off-road capable vehicle and then we're going to Tupperware the inside. Yeah, it's put all, some rubber. It's plastic, it's rubber, it's got hard material. Well, actually, actually, quite a bit of it is soft, but they've yeah. got a lot of industrial looking stuff. The back is all rubber, like plastic, fantastic on the inside, and yeah. we're going to charge a ton for it. It's marketing genius. I kind of like the look of it. It's very rugged inside, kind of rustic. It's cool. It's the Defender. Yeah. And that's it. Thanks for all your great questions. It's always so hard to choose. And reliability was the top question. Yeah. And Andrea's got the best advice. Lease this thing. All right. If you want to get a question through, make sure you follow Andrea. It's motormouth underscore Andrea. If you want to follow me, it's motormouth underscore auto. And because you hear the music, that means it's time for nightlife. Hit it, hit it, hit it! Come on, hit it. Ooh, She's a good one. This inline six is good. Real good. I, I still would like a diesel. So what do you think about the way this thing looks? You know what this reminds me of? What? Like a little toy truck I would have played with as a kid. I like think a, it looks a lot like the Ford Bronco. There are similarities to it. Hmm. Which one came first? This one came first. This one did. Yeah. I like the exterior. It's rugged. It's boxy. It's cool. Yeah. And it's iconic. It says, it says Land Rover on it. It says Defender on it, which means it's expensive. Yeah. We'll get to the price in a moment. And all these black accents that you see throughout, they're in a package, so you can add that on to different trims. That's actually what I like about this Land Rover product is that you don't have to spend you know, $96,000 for the top trim. Ooh, I'm getting ahead of pricing here a bit. You can just add on different packages. Like the one that we're driving is one up from the base model. It actually doesn't come with a panoramic sunroof. That'll cost you over $1,800. But if that's important to you, you can just add that on. Okay, let's get into the functionality. Now you saw me grabbing onto the grab handle here. There's lots of nooks and crannies everywhere. Yep. You've got a floating console with storage underneath in the center. And this, by the way, if you opt for the, um, the six seater, it's basically five seats plus a little jump seat. Yeah. That's kind of cool. Great, so you don't yeah. have the console 
console here, so you can opt for a little jump seat there. And the 10 inch infotainment touch screen here is really nice. It's integrated into the dash, which is kind of cool. I find it a little um, clumsy. It's mm -hmm. not as easy as I would like. Um, yeah, and, and the volume knob is over here, which is handy for the passenger, but it's far away from the driver. Yeah, and you've probably noticed that the touchscreen is a little bit further away mm -hmm. as well, so it does make it slightly awkward. It comes with a digital instrument cluster. It's 12.3 inches. It's quite a nice looking one, and this steering wheel is quite a large steering wheel, and the visibility to this driver display is just perfect. It's, there's absolutely zero obstruction. Nothing. You can see the entire instrument cluster. So one of the reasons why people come back time and again to Land Rovers and Range Rovers is the seating position. Yeah, the command seating position. I get that. When you get used to this, you want it again and again. All right, now speaking of seats, the mm. back seats, the second row, they're fine. They slide four and aft, but yep. it's the third row of seats. It's a bit of a clown car to get in and out <laughs> of the back. I, my goodness, it is something. Once you're in the third row, you have to move up that second row seat or there's not enough room for an adult. And then I think that makes the second row seating less comfortable if there is an adult in the second row. So I would say third row is best for small kids. Do not buy this for its third row capability. No. Buy this because you maybe on occasion have to take an extra kid to ballet or soccer practice or whatever it is because this is not going to be used on a regular basis. Plus the cargo space, oh. when the seats are up, it's terrible. Terrible. I don't even know what you could fit in there. You'd have to be pretty creative, that's for sure. Each week from Instagram, we take one or two questions from questions, coffee, and cars, and we expand on it. We call it our hot topic. Zach, can you read it out? What do you think of Land Rover releasing this discovery and calling it a Defender? Does it disgust you the way it does me? Does producing a fourth seven-passenger SUV that competes with the other three make good business sense? Will this be relevant in the yuppie crowd this year when the electric Rivian R1S is released at a similar price? Well, can I jump on the electric one first? Yeah, do it. Okay, so obviously this person is heavily into the automotive industry and yeah. knows all about Rivian. Uh, I know about it, you know about it, but I, most people have never heard of Rivian. Right. But that was the case also with Tesla. Sure. So right now you're competing with a brand that's been around for many, many decades. I don't think Land Rover's too worried about it. Now, what do you think about having yet another seven passenger utility well guess what in this market 85% of sales come from SUVs and trucks so obviously it makes sense that Land Rover is going in this direction because well, that's what consumers are buying and that's what they're on they're an SUV brand that's what they make yeah so might as well mop up all of that sales right and when it comes to this versus the discovery this is not a great seven-seater this is a seven-seater in a pinch with small kids if you want a proper seven-seater you're gonna go with the discovery because as Zach says this seven seater when you're sitting in the back it feels like you're in a prison cell now it's time for a price pause now the Defender 90 that's the two-door version starts at roughly sixty thousand dollars the first Defender 110 with the two-liter four-cylinder is just over sixty five thousand if you want it with the inline six-cylinder the one we have here it's almost seventy six thousand dollars and the top trim which is called the 110 X is ninety six thousand dollars and while we're at it, the fuel economy is 14 liters per 100 kilometers in the city, 11 liters on the highway, and a combined 12 liters per 100 kilometers. And the U.S. miles per gallon are below that. Holy crap, this thing's expensive. Can you believe that? The top trim is $96,000 Canadian. So that's where the Disco, the Discovery, with a real third row is yeah. gonna be hard to give up for some people, but this thing is selling like crazy. I know, now one good thing is everything is a la carte. So if you get the lower trim, you can just add on to that, including the advanced off-road package if you want that. So you don't have to go with the $96,000 trim you can go with the $74,000 trim which gets this inline six which I think you need for your consideration four categories and four vehicles for you to consider
The main competitor is also the showroom competitor, and that is the Land Rover Discovery with a 3-liter, 6-cylinder turbocharged engine with 355 horsepower and 369 pound-feet of torque. It has a starting price of almost $74,000. The domestic alternative goes to the Jeep Wrangler Rubicon 392. It's the only Wrangler with a 6.4 liter V8 engine with 470 horsepower and 470 pound feet of torque. Pricing has not been announced for this model yet. The one to watch out for is also domestic. It's the Ford Bronco four door with a 2.7 liter EcoBoost engine. That engine, by the way, is only available in two trims. It has 310 horsepower, but 400 pound feet of torque, a starting price of $56,500. The German alternative goes to the Mercedes Benz G550 wagon with 416 horsepower and 450 pound feet of torque and a four liter V8 turbocharged engine. It has a starting price of almost $155,000. So there are four vehicles for you to consider. You get on the road in the city or on the highway and it is terrific. Okay, because all of the stuff that they did to make this capable off-road complements on-road. So a very stiff structure that allows the suspension to work off-road and move around and articulate over all those bumps. Then you take that and you add on the air suspension and then the car knows that it's not off-road, right? Yeah. You're in the normal setting. Yeah. And uh, so the, the stiff platform, the air suspension and the independent suspension all come together to make this really nice, which is why I think most people are going to use it for mall duty. Yes, it takes corners with ease. You go through a roundabout, you don't feel like you're in a larger vehicle, and the turning radius is quite good as well. So final thoughts, the old body on frame Land Rover Defender, highly collectible now. Yeah. They don't make it anymore. It's an end of an era. But this new era, Andrea, what are your final thoughts? Oh, I think it's just terrific. Land Rover nailed it with this Defender from whether you're just using it in the city or you're gonna go off-roading, it's the best of both worlds. For some of you who thought the Defender's off-road capabilities were not gonna be as good as the previous model, they are. And just so you know, it's also still capable of getting to the mall, which is how most people are gonna use it. Yeah. This video is brought to you by Car Cost Canada. Get the dealer's cost, list of rebates, plus discounted interest rates. Use the promo code MOTORMOUTH to become an expert member and get extra searches. The link is in the description below.